Hi, and welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.6. If you've not used Twine in a little while, you may have noticed when you first come to Twine 2.6 that it was changed as part of Twine 2.4, and those changes carry over to 2.6. As I record this in June 2023, there are some new changes, and I want to help you walk through the different user interface options and kind of understand the workflow, the new version of Twine starting at 2.4, carrying over to 2.6, wants us to understand about how we create stories within Twine. So to start, let's begin by using the Use in Your Browser button. Notice down here, it immediately gives us the option to support Twine development. That's Twine the editor development, of course, and not, no part of those donations go over to story format, so keep that in mind. But I want to click No Thanks for this moment. Okay, so I previously created a story right here, and I have an example story. Notice this one story, but I want to help us kind of go through this user interface up here at the top. So notice we have five different sort of primary nouns, story, library, build, view, and twine itself. These help us relate to how we create things within twine. So as I mentioned, when we create in twine, we create stories. And so the first thing we have here is primarily a story. Stories are collected within a library. So a library is a collection of stories. And then we can build, that is produce HTML files or other various formats. We can view these things in various ways and we can change options within the editor, the tool, Twine itself. So notice right here within story, we have new, edit, tag, rename, duplicate, and delete. But notice none of these are selected other than new. We have to select at least one story and then suddenly these other options are Applicable. We can edit and change tags, rename, duplicate, and delete as needed. I'm going to delete this existing story. And I need to confirm, click delete. So notice there are no stories saved within Twine, so let's go ahead and create at least one new one. And I will just leave this as untitled story, and then when I click create, it's going to send us over here to the passage grid. And we can move and edit things around. So as a quick reminder, if you've not used Twine before or you're returning to Twine, when we create with Twine, we are creating stories. Within those stories are different sections. You might think of them as chapters within a novel or other ways of thinking of physical and the digital. In this case, they're called passages. Passages are just the smallest unit within a story. You can think of them as chapters. Sometimes we think of them as scenes or locations or even characters. But I'll go in more detail in a later video about how we can think through various ways of using the metaphor of a passage within creating stories in Twine. Right now, though, we want to move back. So we have a single story. So let's move over to library for a moment. Over here, we have story tags, import, and archive. There might be some situations if you're working with Twine in the browser where you might want to move to a different browser or potentially even move to a different computer. Something to keep in mind is that Twine stores stories as part of the local storage, as part of the web browser itself. These aren't saved to the local computer as files, they're saved as part of the web browser. So that means if you potentially use something like incognito or a private window within a web browser, you won't have access to that same storage. This also means that if you want to use or edit Twine stories across computers, you will need to potentially archive them, all your stories, and move to a different computer or move to a different web browser. So keep that in mind, potentially, if you're interested in moving from Firefox to Chrome or from Safari to Edge or something like that. You need to kind of keep in mind the browser you're using and within the session you're using as well. Potentially, though, you can import in all a collection of stories if you want to, as well as organize them in that way. Let's move to build for a moment here. Notice we have test, play, proof, publish to file, export as tweet. So all these file, all these options, that is, can seem slightly confusing as they apply to different files and what exactly they produce. So I'm going to select this story that potentially, if I wanted to work with the programming aspect of it, I could test it. Or if I wanted to see how things are different are connected within a story, I could test. Potentially, I could play. That would produce a version within the web browser I could play through as a story. I could view the proof copy. So proof copy applies to the code by itself. That is when the code is not run. And so you can kind of see the code or see the connections between different passages. Again, passages are just units within a story. Potentially we could publish a file. We could make an HTML file other people could play or send it to them or potentially could put on some type of hosting service. And finally, we have Export as Tweet. Export as Tweet is a new thing added within Twine 2.6. If you're not familiar with the Tweet format, 
it can seem a little bit strange. What exactly does this mean in connection to Twine? Well, to go back into very long history of Twine, many years ago, about a decade ago as I record this, there was a previous format called Twee that actually predates Twine. Twee is a format that is in plain text, which means you can see the code directly in Notepad or something else. You can open it up and it's not translated by the computer in that, that direct way. So in this right here, if we wanted to take the code of a story, as opposed to sort of the proof of a story, the kind of text of a story, we could export it as Twee. What this allows us to do with Entwine is if we want to, we could pull out the kind of coding part of the story all together with the text and use it as part of another tool that might potentially understand that format. It would also allow us, if we wanted to, to kind of pull out sections potentially of a story and post them for people to see code or comment about it. You will notice in particular, if you look at the Twine cookbook, it has different things in this Twee format. And in fact, most of the examples created in the Twine book were used similar functionality as this, where they were exported as Twee so you could see the code more directly. For most people, this really doesn't matter, but if you're particularly interested in, in the code and working with the more coding aspects of Twine within a story format, this might be useful functionality. And again, added as part of Twine 2.6, returning functionality that was gone for almost uh, a sort of a, a long decade within Twine. So let's move over to view here. So if we want to, and we have many, many stories, we could potentially sort them by different options, last updated names. We would potentially use different tags. If we were working on different drafts of a story and we had duplicates, or I was working with different people, maybe those stories were collected within tags or collected within themes, collected within months, or whatever categories I want and I can use for that purpose. So remember over here in library, we have story tags. So potentially I could add some tags to my story and sort them in that way if I wanted to. And that allows me to impose different categories of things that might be more important to me than sort of last updated or their names. So story, library, build, and view. And then finally over here, twine. So we have preferences. We can change things about twine, the language, uh, width of uh, dialogue boxes, all kinds of things. Uh, sizes, themes, all kinds of very interesting things. Potentially you could change if you would like. We also have story formats right here. So here's the story formats loaded with Twine, right? And I have an extra one down here, Twine Space, from some other work I had previously done. But I could add more if I wanted to. Coming back, we see Twine, we can change, we can see about Twine. Here are people who have contributed to the code, contributed to localization. And of course, it's licensed under the uh, GPL version three license. And then finally, if we want to, we could report a bug and this would send us directly to GitHub, which is a code hosting service that Twine uses. And we could report some type of bug or issue we had found with this program within the web browser. So as a quick overview, remember that when we create in Twine, we create stories. As part of creating stories, they have different internal parts, different sections, we call these passages. So when we're editing a story, we're editing its passages, its different parts and their connections to each other. Stories are collected within libraries. A library is a collection of stories. We can also build those stories in such a way that other people can use them. Right here, publish to file, or potentially if we were more interested in just the code part, export as Twee. And we can test and play our stories as well as look at the more proofing copy that we might use as part of editing and other uses. We can also view, we can sort these stories in different ways and use the tags to only look at those very specific tags to just sorting by theme or who we're working with or whatever tags make the most sense to us as authors. Finally, we can change options about Twine itself, the preferences, story formats about Twine and report bugs if we need to. But coming back over here, we see just a simple change in the kind of metaphors and options we use within the menus. Again, if you haven't used Twine a little bit, these changes came as part of 2.4. The export as Twee options came as part of 2.6. And they're just new ways to think about creating stories within Twine. Thanks for watching.